What is up guys, this is Tito back with another video on the POCO F5 5G and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest build of Evolution X ROM. Yes I know, I haven't made a video from a long time on this, well that's because I have faced a few issues few months ago on this particular ROM and right now it definitely feels a fresh new ROM. This is the 8th April 2024 build, so the latest one. Today when I'm shooting this video, this is 9th April and this particular build is of 8th April, so it's yesterday's build. So you can get an idea about this that I have been using this ROM for about a day now and I would say my experience so far with this particular ROM has been really really awesome. In terms of the changelog, if I tap on it, it doesn't show you anything, it just shows not found. But let me actually tell you, if you are on the previous Android 14 based Evolution X ROM on the Poco A5, you need to clean flash this particular build because this is totally based on a fresh new source. That's why you need to clean flash this particular ROM. If you don't know how to flash this particular ROM on your Poco A5, you can check out the flashing guide from the description of course. Now first of all, let me show you the about section. This is how it looks like we have the Evolution X logo up top, we have the Android version as Android 14. If you just tap and hold, you will get a haptic feedback kind of experience of course and it will give you this Android 14's game and all. I'll just go back from here and let me show you the Evolution X version right now shows as 8.5, the codename is Sorbets and this is the marble and that is codename for Poco A5. Official build again, the secret patch that you are getting is latest of April 5th, 2024. The build manager is still of course show up, so huge thanks to the developer of this ROM. We have to build it as 8th April 2024. Even though this is the initial build, this is official guys and it will receive a lot more fixes, a lot more like newer features and stuff. All the features are not added yet. Now except for the new boot animation, there is a new POCO kind of camera and as you can see this is how it looks like, YOLO kind of accent it has as you are noticing from here on the bottom and here also this is how the settings panel actually looks like. And in the settings panel, we have this auto night mode notify about orientation, all these things. And you can notice the customizations from the screen. Earlier, it was like a camera, I would say, but right now it has changed to this Poco kind of camera. Now, I would say the only bummer is with this particular camera, if I just switch to the video settings, as you can see from here, there is 4K, but you cannot really shoot 4K 60 FPS anymore with this kind of settings. But yeah, right out of the box, the Poco F5 does not come with the 4K 60 FPS. So here, you will also get 4K 30 FPS, but in case you switch to 1080p, you will get the 60 FPS option back. So that's how it is for now. Maybe in future, we'll also get the 4K 60 FPS, not really sure. In the documents, there is the enhanced mode as well. There is the pro mode as well, and you can shoot the pro mode videos if you want to with this. And there are a lot more features like the auto exposure and the portrait mode is actually working perfectly fine. And as you can see, the front camera and stuff portrait mode is also working fine. No need to worry about it. The portrait mode, the night mode, the 61 megapixel mode, everything should be working fine. And if you just swipe up, you will get multiple different options. As you can see, panorama, short film, then the slow motion, AI watermark, long exposure, etc. options are there. You can download them, I guess. I'll show you some samples of the camera here. But overall, I would say yes. If you were using the 4K 60 FPS with the rear camera, you will be slightly disappointed with this particular camera. Also for front camera videos, you can shoot up to 1080p and 60fps. That's how it is. There is no 4K option or anything. You can go as much as 1080p and 60 with the front camera videos. And the lens switching is also working flawlessly. No problems whatsoever with that. By the way, in terms of the quick setting panel, there is the internet toggle, but I could not simply find the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth toggle separately. By the way, this ROM is based on the LineJoy sources. Maybe that's why, but yeah, it does have the internet toggle just like this. You can like bring your hotspot, your mobile data and the Wi-Fi settings all together. And there is the Bluetooth settings and stuff. And this is how the Bluetooth devices will actually appear. It looks like this. And if I go into the settings, there is multiple different options. There is also the new find device kind of feature for the Bluetooth devices which supports it. So that's nice. The toggles I have added is the flashlight, the home controls and the auto rotate, the battery saver, the screen recorder is there. There is different kind of options like the single app and the internet screen option. Then we have the HEVC option as well. You can also record the device audio and microphone audio at the same time. And all these other features are there for the screen recording. There is a dark theme. Then we have the night light always on display kind of toggle is there. And we have the quick share, the alarm, airplane mode, do not disturb hotspot and the data saver as well in the qr code scanner heads up the security kind of stuff is also there i have customized the power menu this is how it looks like well there are a lot more things but yeah in the advanced settings you can go and you can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot if you want to now let's quickly talk about the basic stuff well here play integrity checker if you just do that there is its device integrity and basic integrity both i haven't had any issues with banking apps on this particular rom so far vaulty calls and all everything is working perfectly fine it has the google dialer and with that, even the call recording of PCR is perfectly working fine. No need to worry over here. 
and the faulty calling as you can see it's working fine but there is also the google dialers call recording option in case you want to use that the ir blaster and stuff everything is working great no need to worry about it and even the google play store shows as device is certified so that's nice and in the google photos you will see this option this pixel can back up unlimited photos and videos over here with no extra charge so you are getting the unlimited google photos and videos backup so that's nice and as you can see the 5g is working flawlessly again no need to worry about it by the way in the evolver settings yes there is a lot of customization still i'm not going to show you each and everything but you get the idea there is the sliding of finger on the status bar for adjusting the brightness and all all those kind of features there is the brightness control as you can see and the double tap to sleep all these things are working there is a lock screen kind of settings from where you can actually change the custom clocks different kind of looking clock like ios and stuff like that and if you want to change the android 14 clocks you can go into the wallpapers and styles and then from here in the lock screen you can find all these kind of different clocks so yeah android 14 clocks are there and all the options are present no issues that you will face with the like android 14 kind of clocks there are obviously still plethora of options and here we have the like shortcuts the left and right shortcut of the lock screen you can change that and we also have the home screen kind of settings from here you can build the themed icons and you can change the accent color in the more wallpapers there is the ai wallpaper emoji and stuff like that and all these other wallpapers are there so where was i in the miscellaneous settings you are also gonna get a spoofing kind of separately and you can see just how many spoofs are there including with the unlimited google photo storage that is working still fine we have the ignores window secure flags and the usb configuration you can set it to file transfer for convenience right now let me just talk about the performance well i would say overall while daily driving i haven't faced any issues so far and with chrome right now as you can see for some reason it shows like 70 to 80 fps i don't know why it's happening but otherwise i would say for overall ui smoothness if i open x and if i just straight up start scrolling there is no lags at all i can see no jitter or something like that there is like a lot more smooth experience i would say even on like 120 hertz i can totally say it's 120 hertz definitely no issues and in the refresh it i'll just turn off the adaptive refresh it right now if i open chrome and refresh this page well it's still at 80 fps let's go to 90 so right now as you can see 90 fps is working flawlessly no problems so even after reopening i don't know why there with the 120 hertz it's only giving you the 80 to 90 fps i would say in chrome but otherwise in overall ui you cannot really notice that there is like noticeable 120 hertz smoothness over here with even turned on adaptive refresh rate. so it might be a bug with chrome or something like that but with normal browsing or scrolling and stuff like that there is no problems whatsoever of lags or stutters i didn't face any of those issues and in case you want to get an idea about the overall benchmarks and stuff here are the android 20 geekbench score with a cpu stress test on this particular build to give you an idea about the overall ui performance i'll also try to include a android ai kind of benchmark score over here in the system settings this is how it looks like we have the keyboard the live translate the gesture kind of options we have the quickly open camera and stuff then we have the navigation mode right here in the settings of it we also have the advanced gesture and the extended swipe actions you can customize it between a lot of things as you can see from right here so yeah you get the idea there is the pill length and radius customization i have changed it to the fullest and this is how it looks like with that we have the back gesture height then the back gesture animation and the haptic and stuff i mean button space you can change the swipe to invoke assistant is of course there and there is the new kind of google assistant over here we have the left edge right edge customization let me go back we have the two button and three button navigations as well so you can use those if you want to we have the one-handed mode working perfectly fine as you can see there is a lift to check phone as well and we have this show ambient mode as well this is working fine we have the double tap to check phone as well personal power button action you can change it to power menu or assistant then we have the swipe to screenshot that is of course working perfectly fine you'll get the share edit delete and the google lens feature there is also the quick torch option and you can of course use it if you want to quick torch let me actually test it so yes it does work with the quick torch option and here we have the prevent ringing option as well and by the way this google backup kind of option is actually working perfectly fine no need to worry about it and in here we also get a system updater so if there is a newer update i think it will show up over here that you can use now let me just quickly talk about the stock launcher this is the pixel launcher by the way to the left of the home screen we have the google stage cover page swiping up will get you to the app drawer swiping down will be getting you to the quick setting panel and this is how it looks like i'll talk about the quick setting panel a little bit later and here and the widgets are working totally fine but some of the widgets like the battery widget and stuff sometimes doesn't show the bluetooth battery as of right now as you can see it's not showing the bluetooth battery but i have seen it working not really sure why it's not showing up and even the subscriber account widget is working fine tapping and holding you will get multiple different options like these everything just works flawlessly opening and closing your app and the animations and stuff all these things 
are working perfectly fine no problems whatsoever with the opening apps and closing app stuff and the animation everywhere it's just butter smooth the recent panel looks like this to the left of the home screen we have the clear all option the screenshot the select and there is the split screen option if you need that let's talk about some different things like the battery settings this is how it looks like yes there are a little bit of change here and there in here you will get a separate battery information kind of settings in here you will see your battery details like the lithium polymer battery over here we have for the Poco F5 the health you can see it's good and we have the temperature right here 36.5 degrees and you can also notice the voltage right here and the resigned and maximum or current capacity and there is a cycle count the charging cycle count is present in here in the settings right now for me it's 374 cycles now talking about the battery life well i have actually not tested it thoroughly because i have been only using it for about a day or more than that the battery life that i have been getting is about eight hours of screen on time and all the numbers are estimated guys with the echo battery app and the screen off here shows as three days of standby and the combined use shows as about 16 hours of total usage in the health section doesn't show up anything for me because i haven't charged it from like 40 to 100 so that's how it is but the charging speed it's perfectly fine the fast charging and all everything is working fine no need to worry about it in terms of the sound and vibration settings this is how it looks like we have multiple different options like the volume steps and stuff are still there and we even have the vibration and haptic kind of feedback and there are the in-call vibrations and more haptic kind of settings there is the touch feedback and all you can actually customize we have the power app volume control and even the dolby atmos is there so you can change the equalizer preset you can also have the profile to dynamic or something else we have the dialogue enhancer as well then we have the bass enhancer volume leveler and stuff like that so you can definitely use the dolby atmos if you want to by the way the volume panel looks like this you can also change the whole look of the volume panel if you want to and you can change the output device from right here as well these things are working fine you can put the phone into vibrate or silent from here and normal expanding the volume panel is also working fine here in the display settings this is how it looks like we have the screen timeout there is the screen attention as well there is the dark theme and you can enable the pitch black kind of option over here and in here one good thing is there is the refresh rate changing option and you can put the refresh rate to 90 hertz if you want to there is also this adaptive refresh rate if you want to use that you definitely can even low power refresh rate you can actually set it to 90 hertz in case you want that we have the allow window level blur double tap to wake and the prevent external wake up and stuff like that now in the security settings i have noticed one thing in the more settings you will not get the app lock over here the app lock is completely missing for now so it might be added in the future updates but we do have the fingerprint scanner and the face unlock kind of option currently i have the fingerprint scanner set up right now i'm going to show you that and let me just show you the pickup gesture if i just put the device on the desk and pick it up on my hand as you can see the pickup gesture works flawlessly even double tap to wake will be working perfectly fine so that's nice and here if i just tap the fingerprint scanner as you can see it unlocks let me just enable the always on display so that you can get an idea about the always on display and stuff as you can see the animations definitely looks flawless i would say it's very smooth and tapping on the fingerprint scanner unlocks perfectly fine and double tapping on the status bar still locks the device and double tapping to wake and even tapping on the fingerprint scanner works perfectly fine and everywhere the animation just notice how smooth it looks while locking and unlocking the device there is also a watch unlock if you have a smartwatch you can definitely use it and here we have the face unlock let me just set it up so setting up face unlock is done and in here there is the always require confirmation option and the skip lock screen option i think there is no swipe up to actually unlock kind of settings and here if i just double tap to wake as you can see all the time it unlocks there is no option to actually swipe up then only unlock with the face unlock so that's how it is it kind of is less secure i would say in case you want to use the face unlock you definitely can no problems with that but for now i'll just delete the data let me go back in the settings we have the auto confirmation lock and we have the enhanced pin privacy lock screen timeout and we have the scramble pin layout and stuff like that so let me know down there in the comments what you guys think about the latest evolution x rom i'll try to review it thoroughly later on also with the newer kind of updates but right now with this particular update i can totally recommend you guys to actually use this particular rom as your daily driver i have been using it i have had no issues whatsoever with this particular rom so finally for the poco a5 we have a very stable android 14 kind of experience with the april security patch and stuff so thank you so much for watching this video guys give it a thumbs up if you liked it share this video with your friends if you want them to know about the latest and most stable android 14 experience we are getting with the evolution x rom on the poco a5 finally subscribe to the channel if you have not yet this is Chito from kdn tech signing off for today and i'll be catching you guys in the next one bye, -bye now